later on. What? I'm just gonna, how do I pin it again? Got my Oops. deuce. How do you pin the comment? Oh, here we go. Yes. All right, oh, and he's gone. He's gone. Babe, babe. <laughs> Come here, you know it. Babe. Got the whole you crew. You're working out. <laughs> All right, so uh, we'll let this build up a little bit. I want to get enough people on here and explain what we're doing so I don't look like a total idiot. <laughs> Uh, but those who don't know me, my name is Julian Smith, smith.julian for the people overseas. Uh, but we got a home workout that I want to do for you guys. I kind of want it to be something more along the lines of, and I, I really do like the body weight stuff. I do body weight stuff. I incorporate a lot of it in for the people that were having a hard time on our site as well. But what I really wanted to do is get kind of, people aren't really understanding that maybe your gyms are going to be closed a little longer than a week, two weeks, a month. And what I wanna do is help you guys set something up as if my gym was completely gone, I had no way to train. There's only so much body weight workouts I wanna do. Like if I'm trying to use something as a stepping stone, that's one thing, but I wanna get something set up for the long haul as well. So once this builds up, I'll show you guys what I would be doing in here and uh, we'll answer some questions as well, but it'll be pretty cool and you'll have a home gym set up by the time this whole thing's done. They're asking if Bane uses a fat burner. Bane uses a fat burner. The fat burning products just don't really work, man. No, I'm just kidding, yeah. Bane's hitting that off season. He took this opportunity to continue bulking. And uh, he's going to blow everybody away one day. It's pretty ridiculous, man. We'll get him it's, out here. It's all just muscle under yeah. there. I don't know what the deal is. Anybody who's following along, Aldo's got a... Uh, he had surgery the other day, and he's been, like, not aggressive, but I feel like once he's got his little bit of energy back, he's, like, over time on the kitties, so they don't want to hang They're out running. Here, so we got the dogs out here training with us today. So, we can get started. Get going? Yep. All right. It is nine. All right, guys. So one thing that I thought would be really cool, the one thing that everyone's not doing and not talking about is the weight aspect of this whole thing. People will get over there and trust me, dude, I'm the first person to find the heaviest thing possible, you know, and try to deadlift it, you know, bench press it or whatever, shrug it, whatever I can do to get maximum weight on a muscle. But for the people that can't, I mean, we have a sectional couch. Can't leg press my couch. If, I had a norm, if we had a normal couch in here, maybe I can get some leg pressing going. But what I thought would be kind of cool, and I thought would be a big help because every bodybuilder, every fitness you know, person has some type of a supplement or some type of a bottle like this. And just using ours, you don't need arms race for this, but check it out. So I went outside, and this is the biggest tub that we have for the protein, but I went outside, filled them with river rocks, and now you have a weight. So I, I weighed all these out. These are each 10 pounds. So you have a 10 pound plate, 10 pound plate, 10 pound plate, 10 pound plate. These ones are closer to four. But what I just wanted to show everybody is with these things, if you had the two and a half pounders or some of those big massive ass weight gaining jugs, fill those with rocks as well. And then like if they're gonna be sand or rock or anything, measure them on your scale. We all have a scale. And then you could mark on the top of them what they are. And then you have a weight set. It's not like you're going over there and grabbing a, I don't know, like a chair, ottoman, something like that, and going, I don't know what this is, it feels heavy. With something like this, you can go, man, I structured enough weight on those side laterals, now I could go more next time, or put something in here that's heavier and change the weight at the top. So you can do certain things like this. In my opinion, this would be the most beneficial thing in regards to bodybuilding. Is it stupid? Yeah, but this is 10 pounds. This is exactly the same as a 10 pound plate. And if you get something like this, that is meant to hold a shit load of weight, shoot load of weight, then you put all your weights in it, everything that you got, and trust me, like this could get extremely heavy. And this is, and just real quick on this one, this is for what you would do if you're going to actually structure the weight that's going into it. But if you wanted to just take all of these out and fill something like this with rock or something, you can go for that as well. This is just a way for people to get back to that bodybuilding vibe of what weight did I do last time? Got to add a little bit this time. We can't go six friggin' months with leg pressing a couch. It's about as three sets of 10 as it gets and about as redundant as it's going to be and hitting plateaus like a mother effa. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to try to do structured stuff like this so we can get back to our normal routine. So taking these out, I'm going to show you all these and then we're going to go over it first. So another thing that I grabbed meant to hold a lot got handles already part of it. You can load this with whatever you want, even if it's as light as possible or as heavy as it can handle. 
upright rows, certain things. You want to start grabbing stuff that's meant to hold a lot of stuff. Same thing with luggage. Load this thing up with whatever. A lot of the bigger ones, like the, uh, what's the one that I have in there? It's like a trunk, right? The trunk can carry up to, I think it's like 200 pounds in that thing. So you load that thing up and get somehow that on top of you, you can start using a lot of things like this and start structuring what goes into these things. 10 pounds, three pounds, plus the weight of this. Now you know how much you bench pressed or shrugged. So next time you do it, it's not like just doing the same pump thing over and over. You're like, wow, I'm actually getting a hard, definitely gonna be able to get a harder workout because you know what you're doing. So that being said and done, you have little options like this. I'll take all this stuff out when we're talking, but one thing that I think people need to remember is the most important thing is to hit the mandatories on every muscle. So your, and it's going to be uh, particular to that person. So let's say you feel side laterals 10 times more than you feel a shoulder press. Everyone says you should be doing a, doing a shoulder press, but you feel more of a side lateral. What should you do? I would stick to a side lateral. So if we're going to go through every single muscle today, quads, hamstrings, glutes, all the way down up to the upper body, abs and everything, let's pick one mandatory muscle, uh, mandatory exercise per muscle for like a, a quad, it's going to be a squat, for glutes, it's going to be a hip thrust, uh, for hamstrings, it's going to be a stiff leg dead, etc., etc. But what we want to do is pick the one exercise that is going to be a bitch to stimulate. So we're squatting, you know, I'm not the strongest squatter. I'm, not, I'm sure a lot of people are like, how many freaking tubs am I going to fill up to squat? Better than nothing, better than, better than just doing body weight over and over. So what we want to do is since I can't put a shitload of weight on my back cause I don't have a bar, I'm going to do a front squat similar to like a goblet and do something that I could support on the front. And if I have something like this, you'll be able to do it. So we have all of these. We're going to be going from the quads, the hamstrings, the glutes, all the muscles picking our favorite thing that we want to do. So I'm going to get this set back up. And as I'm doing this, any questions could come through. And if nobody's on, we'll go back to bed. Cool. Do you want me to hit you with a question in the meantime? Hit me with That's it. That's a good one. Uh, would you stick with full body or keep to a muscle group split during this time of home workouts? If you can do a muscle group split like I'm talking about, absolutely. So I think that the full bodies, like when, when Case and I go on vacation, like if you don't have enough time, like, hey, we're going to be traveling for like two or three days throughout this thing, we're going to have a terrible workout, full body it up. But when it comes to bodybuilding, you got to start getting back to your normal routine. Push, pull legs, upper body, lower body, uh, you know, bro splits. We built our bodies training a certain way. If we could just do a, a full body something or body weight something every single day to look like a bodybuilder, we would have done it. And I trust me, a lot of people can get some serious work done with just their body weight, but sometimes you need a little bit more and that's what we're trying to do. So I, if I had a choice, I would try to do it, get back to like, for example, today would be abs and calves. I'm going to train abs and calves today for my own workout. If tomorrow is back, I would do my best to hit back and keep my routine going. And real quick, what's your height and weight? <laughs> height and weight, six <laughs> foot, uh, 210 right now. Uh, actually, 209.6 was my uh, waking up on the scale. So I haven't really adjusted anything. It's been really hectic with the, uh, everything going on. So what I thought I would just end up doing is kind of like not pay attention to it and just focus on what we got going on. And the weight has definitely slowed down. I'm going to be adjusting this week, but the cut's going well. It's just, I didn't want to get too aggressive with everything. Knowing, dude, we would go to the grocery store and there's like no meat at almost every grocery store that we go to. So, uh, we do a lot of like, I'm doing some of the vegan options that case has uh, a shit load of protein powder, which is I've never like drank so many protein shakes in my life, but you got to do what you got to do. This isn't forever. Let's all remember that. This is not going to be forever. It's just a time period in our life that's going to suck for a little bit and we're all going to get back to it. We're all going to be jacked. No one's going to remember. All right. All right. Get this over here. I like how I filled this with like wash All right. So we'll start with the mandatories. So when it comes to like legs, I'm going to fill this thing up with whatever I can. Sorry. In my personal opinion for like quads, I'm always going to go with squats. It's the biggest bang for your buck. If you could get uh, some type of a leg extension going in here, like a body weight leg extension, those are good as well. But I want to stimulate muscle. This is going to be, I want to like make everybody remember that this is going to be the biggest pain in the ass of these exercises because you're trying to get the most amount of uh, weight on the muscles possible. But what I like about something like this is it's made to hold a lot. It's got the handles. 
you know, we've all gotten, you know, moved our homes or something like this where we have these Rubbermaids or some type of a Tupperware where it's like, God damn it, this thing is heavy, someone help me. So we'll get something like this, it's just a perfect solution. So in a goblet squat position, close stance, wide stance, wholly wide, doesn't matter what you wanna do, it's just already in a good position. You can grab this thing like this, whatever you really want. Again, it's not the convenience of a bar, our gyms are shut down, we're trying to do as, as best as possible to stimulate the quads. So getting into this position for a front squat or a goblet squat, if this was underneath, and just doing a normal squat. It's funny to think about, but I was going through this book the other day, I'll grab it real quick. Got both of them out here. But the Bill Pearl and the Arnold book, of a modern encyclopedia of modern bodybuilding. And all of it is just dumbbells. Replace dumbbells with pillows. Replace dumbbells with, you know, rubber maze. Replace dumbbells, you know, again, barbell. You just do all this stuff with like front, uh, with the rubber maze stuff. It's really cool how old school bodybuilders built their physiques very similar to like what we're doing. And we're kind of dogging it right now. So simple is sometimes better. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people walk out of this as long as your diet and everything's on point. If you stick to the basics, you can walk out of here a little improved. So front squats on that. We're going to go from here to a hip thrust. Any type of a ledge. I'm just going to use this. I don't know how many people have a weird little drop down in their living room, but make do. Uh, coffee table work best as well. Again, I'm trying to, uh, I'm going to catch my breath <laughs> on that one. But uh, one thing that I want to say on these movements is you're trying to use so much and something like this without having a bar that goes across your hips is gonna be really difficult. But you might not get the range of motion because it's sitting right here. But having that weight on the muscle, even if you have a tinier range of motion than coming all the way down like you normally would, just having this weight on that muscle, which hasn't been on for a little bit because we don't have a gym, tiny range of motion down, and just letting your body feel that weight again is gonna be a game changer. Stimulating it, letting your muscles know that, hey, we're still doing this shit. Be ready to go. Tiny range of motion. Legs are pretty easy. I think what's really fun about legs is like, just something like this kind of takes care of all the mandatories because we're gonna go to stiff leg deadlifts next. And again, leave this thing right here. Inside shoulder with stance, you can vary it up whatever you want. That's what's really cool about these types of movements. If you want to just do squats, sumo stance for four sets, Outside shoulder with stance for four sets, shoulder with stance for four sets, inside shoulder with stance for four sets, feet touching for four sets. You're telling me that's not a great leg workout. I don't know what we're doing here. So stiff leg dense. Keep the back, no bend. Position up. Go to the range of motion that works for you. Get that good stretch. If you think about it, every single one of these things is exactly the same. It's just an awkward thing that you're doing. But once, I think the biggest mind F for me was the irritation of not knowing when I'm lifting. Well, is it enough weight? Is it too much weight? I don't know if I'm going up next time or should I go less? But if you do certain things like this where it's like, hey, I got 120 pounds in here. Now I could do, I could do structure, I could add more reps or I could add more weight to it to make it harder. It just makes this whole thing a little bit more easier. So. Squats, uh, goblets, hip thrust with the Rubbermaid, and then stiff leg deads. That's gonna take care of it for the lower body part of the, uh, portion of that. Those are the mandatories. We're gonna go on to the upper body mandatories, and then we're gonna walk around and figure out all the kind of small stuff that we could do with the side lateral pillows, fat cat bane curls, I don't know, we'll get everything going, so. And we are gonna hit every muscle group, right? Cause someone was asking about back and. Every muscle, that's what we're moving on to now. I won't leave you hanging. <laughs> all right, from here. All right, we will go to, and then what I want to say was mandatories in regards to, uh, those look very similar to like what we would normally do. You're just holding a, a rubber made instead. But what I want to say is it gets difficult with upper body because a lot of the stuff that you have involves a bench or a rack that you can get under with a lot enough weight that the bar can pass by your chest or push or press up. So when it comes to uh, the biggest bang for the buck when it comes to chest for me is just push ups and making them weighted. So. I'll end up grabbing a backpack, which is right over here, throwing it on my back. And since that little biatch down, because you put a bunch of books in there and then you get it to like sit straight on your back with it pulled all the way down, it's pretty secure. It's very similar to those weighted vests. Uh, and I'm trying to think. Yeah, let's go. I was thinking of a different backpack. But this will be all we need. There's like 500 pounds in here. Don't ask. <laughs>
hand sanitizer. <laughs> okay. So, backpack. And just to remind people, we'll do some questions at the end for sure. Yeah, yeah. GNC is going to have to kick me off. <laughs> and I don't have anything to do for like three months. All right. So, just a push up position again. I got to reiterate this over and over because someone's going to say, man, that's shit, man, that's whatever. You can go bench press a couch. You can go do this, but what we want to do is try to structure the workouts to get it better. If all you do is one couch press over and over and over and over, your body's going to get used to that. You still need to come up with new stuff. So push up position, put as much into this backpack as possible. You could even have somebody, if it's starting to swing back and forth, have somebody behind you just making sure it stays stable on your back and just push up. Push ups. What's fun about situations like this is this will really make you appreciate the body weight portion of bodybuilding more. You'll learn how to use just your body weight to simulate it. I wouldn't even be surprised if you got a better mind muscle connection with trying to figure out just the basics over and over. It's really rare that people sit down and go, man, I need to really figure out my push up. Nope. It's because you don't need to do push ups anymore. You try to, but the bench press is the, the main category. So when you get onto this other stuff, it's really important to actually nail them down. So one thing that I want to do for, uh, we'll go different on each one of these. Backpack for chest, a little different for uh, shoulders, just because we were messing around with this last night. Uh, just because the way you can grab it, I have uh, wrist problems. I've done enough stupid stuff where I've tweaked my wrist in the past and just putting my wrist in weird positions is just, just not great. And I was just doing these. Shoulder press. song for what's going on. <laughs> but I get it. Alright. So again, stuff like this is going to be a little bit more, that's one weight. How are you going to add weight to this? So this could be something that's like, you know, four sets of 15 at the exact same weight, but those mandatory things in the beginning, instead of doing a, a little, I'll call this more of just like a accessory movement. We were talking about more of a pressing movement for shoulders where you can structure stuff on your uh, push-ups, you can structure stuff on this. So even if it's a little bit in front, what's actually really fun about stuff like this is you're, you're gonna have a harder time, it's gonna be easier to do leg movements with this, it's gonna feel more natural, but you're gonna need a lot more weight to stimulate your legs, but you don't need as much weight to stimulate your upper body, but it's a pain in the ass to get this thing around your face and stuff for proper form. So pick and choose your battles, find things that work best for you, but shoulder pressing there, you're gonna get your main thing out of the way first. So what do we got, back? Back, yep. Fantastic voyage. Unless you wanna do the side laterals while you're on shoulders. Yeah, I think that's. Pillows. Yeah. Side laterals. I was actually thinking this would be like just a great time to do these guys. Hold it here, a little grip work at the same time. 10 pounds, and if you had larger tubs, make them go a little heavier, and then you could actually structure this, do strip sets, drop sets. If you only have you know, one thing in here and you're just doing a bunch of side laterals, that's just one type of workout. If you have all your jugs that go up, and I'll show everybody again, I filled these, four of these, I'm just doing nothing. <laughs> filled these with river rocks outside. These are 10 pounds each. I don't have any of the larger tubs here, but if you have some of the bigger tubs that even have some of the pale handles like the like the old school like weight gainer shakes, those massive tubs. Dude, fill those things with rocks. They're, I mean, they're huge and they can just be used as plates. Put the plates inside of stuff to simulate the muscle more. But in regards to things like side laterals, front raise, get over rear delts. I mean, freaking A. Ski pulls, get some. All right. Do you want to try with the pillows too? Yeah. Just to show, because I yeah, thought so that was just a good idea. The house. I mean, things like this, pillows in general, not very heavy, side laterals, but couch cushions are freaking heavy. So I don't know, I think these probably weigh a little bit more than those, uh, those jugs, but it's also something that's a little bit more, you know, strange compared to a dumbbell. I would use something like this, you know, when people do a side lateral with like uh, the easy bars, try to balance it in the middle to make the bar stay straight. There you go. Grab this thing in a position or somewhere where it's like this and then rotate yourself so it's up then do a side. Get yourself in a position where that thing's hanging, 
turn it up, and then do a side. Make everything as hard as possible, and you can make these little tweaks. I go down into a <laughs> mobility position when I try to rest. All right, next one. We'll get back going. Let's get a little water first. You got any questions? Oh man, we had a bunch. Hold on. We'll get a couple real quick. Someone asked. Uh, if there's no downtime, there's no uptime. How do you uh, do curls and chest if you don't have a cat as big as Bane? Oh man, I mean, <laughs> invest. Yeah. Cats. That's all you need to do. We'll get something good. Uh, um, biceps. We got back biceps, triceps. This is a good one. What are your thoughts on the HIT training or calisthenics for these no gym days? I dig it. So, again, the more you stimulate a muscle, it's not going to go away as much as you guys think. I really want people to understand that. The people that are tagging me in their, uh, their couch leg pressing and their calisthenics videos and their push-up challenges, I fucking love it. You guys are awesome because you guys are doing something about it. The people that are sitting there saying, that's stupid, man, I don't get it. You will look very different soon. <laughs> I don't know what I need to scream at everybody, but like we all train like bodybuilders or we train a certain way to look a certain way. What do you think is gonna happen when it's gone? All right, I'm back. <laughs> so when it comes to that kind of stuff, hell yeah, I think it's awesome. Uh, my whole thing with that is if you are a, like a calisthenics guy and you can continue doing it, I mean, you guys are awesome and you got a full gym 24 seven, but I think that stimulation for a bodybuilder is absolutely useful. I would just try to get back to some of the mandatory stuff too. Like that's why I said, get the, get the squat out of the way, get the squat out of the way and then go do some of your other stuff, more body weight work. But that's why, you know, getting those no brainers done is going to be, is going to really help secure those bodybuilding gains. So cool. one more little squirt. <laughs> mm. More question. Trying to think of ones that won't take like an hour and a half to answer. Check it. <laughs> All, right. All right. So we're going to back now. Okay. So back again, I would keep these very simple. This one, I mean, this is not a rubber made commercial, <laughs> but this is freaking sweet. The more that I'm doing this, it's like, this could be probably the only thing that you need to get these mandatories done. Uh, bent over rows, simple, right? Uh, what I was doing it last time, I was grabbing the, uh, the piece of luggage, but I had to scoop all the way around. So we were all talking about when you contract all the way up, the piece of the luggage hits your chest and you don't get a full contraction. These handles are all the way at the top, made by bodybuilders. <laughs> all right, so in this position, you could do, get a little uh, bend in the legs. So you get more of like a, a pen lay row, more of explosive, or get a little bit of a lift for your bent overs. Trugs. I mean, it, it just goes on. For back, you're good to go. Uh, I was messing around with one the other day. Uh, we'll get on to the, uh, once we get past this, I'll show you some of the accessory stuff that we're doing. Uh, rows for that. Again, you could even do a deadlift. Get into this position as low as you can. Yeah, that's weird. But still, it's, I mean, as good as possible. You want to do that, it's going to bang you on the way up. Uh, probably pinch you on the, you know what, but it's better than nothing. So back squats, those no-brainers need to be done. Uh, what do we got now? Biceps, triceps? Biceps, triceps. Best day of my life. Here we go. <laughs> biceps and triceps, I think what's really cool about it is like, I mean, it's just all the same stuff. So finding a way to do bicep curls uh, structured, I would get over here with this, just because. I want something to be as dumbbell as possible, and then holding something like this, or that just won't cut it. So in a position here, we'll have to sit down at your side. One, two, three. Right, switch sides. Cross over with the other hand and just touch. Make sure we're feeling it. We're feeling it. Make sure it's good. I think uh, these ones are pretty good for that. In regards to this, maybe some hammer curl stuff. But as you curl up, Weight's gonna shift, you don't wanna make sure this thing pops off. Duct tape that sucker, I know we're all getting uh, part times. Uh, this one's pretty good too, because this is the first one that we did. Our triceps. Again, going back to the mandatories, as much as we wanna do a, uh, you know, a single arm just a kickback, the weight pulling down, you wanna be able to isolate it so the only thing moving is this thing, and you're not worrying about any other muscle. So 
One of my favorite exercises for triceps is the overhead extension because everything stays stationary. You can't really get much going. So let's try here. Momentum, I mean. Actually, grabbing on this was like, the thing was made for it. <laughs> so in this position, standing overhead, all the way up. Again, for everybody who's chiming in a little late, the reason why we're using this, this, and this is because you could put structured weight into each one of these so you can either track your weight that you're doing, progressive overload with reps or volume. It's just a better way to structure and get back to your bodybuilding routine instead of just saying, I'm gonna do a thousand push-ups today by the end of the day. Let's get a little bit more structured. Certain things are all good, like they were mentioning earlier, calisthenics, all your normal stuff, but if you are a bodybuilder and you're trying to get some type of a bodybuilder working, all the other stuff is good. We just want to get back to some of these mandatory movements as, as best as possible. So, what are you say? Do you want to show them the, the rocks one more time? Yeah, I'm sorry. Just because there's people chiming in. Yeah, yeah. So, I was up early filling these suckers up. <laughs> I went outside, and what's really cool about, I was thinking in regards to bodybuilding. Bodybuilders. These are all things that most bodybuilders, most people have in their uh, house, especially that are fitness freaks or fitness people. You have some type of protein jug. Everyone's got like storage, laundry basket, and friggin' luggage, unless you've never wanted to travel. You can put luggage in, the, in their car and go for a road trip. So we fill them all with rocks. These each weighed out were about 10 pounds. Uh, I'm sure if you filled it with different stuff, maybe like, or uh, maybe one of the bigger ones, you can get it up to like 20 or so. But what I wanted to show people is now that these are done, you can, put, you can write 10 on this, and now you have a weight set. 10, 20, 30, 40 pounds, and then these ones, little uh, I think these were like three or so pounds, and then you got a bunch of these, three, six, nine, whatever, but once you have structured weight, and let's say you had a few big ones, this is starting to look like a weight set, you know what I'm saying? And then once you have your weight set, you load up your bar like you normally would, and then you do your reps. So that's really what I wanna show everybody. The calisthenics part of it's awesome. The body weight stuff is awesome, but I think people are starting to realize I'm not trying to kill you know, five days worth of time. I'm trying to figure out what the hell I'm gonna do for four months. And you're gonna not wanna do push-ups every day. You wanna start get back to your normal routine and start figuring out a way to structure that shit because it's not just gonna be structuring that stuff. And I wanna make sure that everyone gets it just because I, want to make, I just want to make sure it's hard work. We've all worked really hard to get here and we've never, I've never had anything like this happen in my life where it comes to a point where no one can train. And I just want to make sure everyone gets the best results possible. And once you get past the body weight portions, we need to get a little bit more structured. And this is my, my honest belief of like what's going to hold everything together is if you can get an actual type of at-home weight set going and do the most with it. Cool. I had a question. Uh, someone's asking, how do you keep your knees healthy? Uh, my, well, with my knees, I've never really had any issues with my knees, but I've always practiced stretching and flex like mobility since I started training. Like if there was never a time where when I was squatting, I always appreciated the full range of motion, even if my high school coaches didn't want me to do it. Uh, so I always practiced, like, even if I wasn't hitting, you know, full range of motion when I was testing, I still wanted to go full range of motion for myself. So I've always had and worked on mobility. I think mobility, proper form uh, and not getting out of that groove of like perfect uh, reps, I don't think you will have knee problems. A lot of people might have genetically, you know, bad joints or something like that from the get go. You might not be able to, you know, based off of how your lower and upper legs work, you might not be hitting an acid grass squat. It's not, not how you're built. That's okay. Uh, but is what it is. Cool. Uh, I think some people just logged on and missed the back part, but they were saying that the back workouts seem to be the hardest to do at home. Yeah. Um, so if you could maybe just go over, someone said you could do a single arm row too with the luggage, mm -hmm. different things like that. Yeah, so uh, another thing that happens with uh, not having barbells is you're, no one's thinking range of motion, right? So this thing, if this was like anything else, I, like a dumbbell, I'd be able to get this thing all the way to here and be able to get a good stretch all the way down. This is kind of like a limited range of motion. Just like that person said, get a single arm row going. I really like this because the luggage has this little handle here. It's like made for it and it's off to one side instead of this so we can get really close to this side 
instead of being out here. But what I was doing was stepping up one, letting it touch the ground, so you get as full, uh, full of a stretch as possible instead of being like here. And you get that bigger stretch. Very good. Yeah, I think that's a good one. Uh, again, good point because you're doing a row. One of the basics, man. Keep those rows in there. I'm a dude who does a lot of accessories because I like that kind of stuff. But when it comes down to it, I mean, all of this stuff is accessories and tweaking the original movements that were given to us by the, the dudes who started this shit or stuff you know, a long time ago. What we want to do is tweak that stuff so we can keep going. And that row is an excellent you know, uh, way to throw in, especially if you throw some weight in as well. Uh, here's a good question. I've um, been having trouble with the sissy squats. Any tips on how to nail them? Sissy squats? Yeah. And real quick while you catch your breath, um, if anyone comes in with like negativity and stuff, you're getting like blocked from the story. Like this is not our first rodeo, so. Yeah. Oh, are we talking crap? <laughs> okay, what's up? It's, it's, it's more about like the GNC stuff, I'm just saying. Oh, okay. If you're in here with, with anything yeah, negative, you're, you're gone. Yeah, you're trying to work out, man. Yeah. Right, anyway, so sissies. Sissy squats. So the deal with sissy squats, uh, I think the wall supported would be the best. Uh, as much as people want to go out there and just rock, like you're, you know, uh, what's it called? Uh, going under the hula hoops or whatever, hula. But wall supported like this is going to be the biggest bang for your buck. The more upright you walk. It's all right. Oh, the, <laughs> I the rocks? Tripped. Okay. All right. And we were doing these the other day. I think the wall support is the best. It's very similar to uh, uh, the Smith machine. But the Smith machine, although has a little bit of weight to it, that little bit of weight on the bar of a Smith machine is gonna be super hard for a very difficult body weight exercise like this. So you can get into a position like this, when you are leaning up against this, it's still your body weight. There's no added weight on this. It's not like there's a 15 pound whatever on your back. So in this position, butt off, take your head off, and then bring it down. It's actually like, one of the nicest ways to do it. The one thing that I was thinking about was you do this for four months, you might not have any pain on your wall anymore. <laughs> but it's a surprisingly really smooth way. And as long as you keep the form with uh, your upper legs and torso in that same position, I mean, I feel like a bear <laughs> trying to get an itch off my back. But it's a surprisingly really good way to do that. So, so uh, one thing that I want to show you just in regards to like maybe not being able to do it yet just uh, take it easy on yourself, don't stress. We're gonna shorten the range of motion because I want you to get better at it, not just try to do 30 at once. So let's make a little pyramid so uh, we have something to touch. Kind of cinch it in, touch that thing, and then just, I mean, just make it easier for us, right? Go down until the pillows stop you. That's it, we go back up. Boom. Oh, that was easy. Get out of your pillow. We don't need that. Ooh. A little easy. All right, let's go a little bit further. Don't need it anymore. You know what I mean? So take that range of motion high. Work with what you can do. Once that gets easy, remove a little range of motion, and you'll be, you'll be good. As, I would say three or four leg workouts, you'll be good. You'll be getting that range of motion further and further. Let's mess everything up. So this is a good question. Um, this is kind of specific about one exercise, but you can make it more general uh, mm -hmm. in your answer. But uh, if we're consistently doing push-ups, even with added weight to them, will okay. I see an increase in bench strength once we get back to the gym? Probably not. <laughs> and well, I don't want to say probably not. When I take a long time off of doing something, you always see really, it's, it's like when you don't do lunges for a really long time and you finally do them, it's not that much weight, but you're like, God damn dude, my butt cheeks are gonna rip off. It's because you haven't done it for so long. You're not going to walk probably back into the gym and hit your max if you have not benched for four months. You know what I'm saying? But you might walk back into the gym and be like, holy shit, I have, shoot, I've never had a better pump in my chest. You know what I mean? And I think that's what you need to remember. The strength's going to come back very soon. The size, that is going to atrophy away if you have an issue with training and your diet's not on point. Remember, if you don't bodybuild or eat like a bodybuilder, the bodybuilding look's going to go away. And if that starts to go away, because of something happening in your life that's out of your control, it will come back. I promise you it will come back and it will come back faster than you think. Uh, but yeah. Cool. I'll let you catch your breath. I did like three or four of those. <laughs> what the three? Right. And then we'll finish up with uh, biceps, triceps. Do we okay. have a question? Sounds good, yeah. Um, 
what type of rep ranges would you aim for in general per body part with this at home stuff? Oh, so this is where it's coming back to what I would normally do. I'm gonna try to hit my normal rep ranges. Like, I don't wanna just all of a sudden do 50 reps all the time. It, it is a great way to like, holy crap, we're shocked, but we still gotta get back to our hypertrophy. It's really hard to get into those rep ranges and be like, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna max out today with my Rubbermaid. So I understand there's a lot of stuff like that. What I would be trying to do this entire time, if, we were, if, if, if I had this choice, I would be trying to keep my rep range between eight and 20 on everything and go as heavy as possible. Even if it's, I don't know, like pressing a car outside, like whatever it would have to be to get those rep ranges in there because you don't wanna to get to like rep 20 and be like, could have done 40. You know what I mean? You wanna to get to 20 and be like, that was it. So a lot of people are, you gotta really you know, check yourself and say, is the weight that I'm even doing heavy enough? Because the stuff that I'm doing on that, that's not heavy enough for me. This is just for showing purposes because the stuff that I will need in there, I'll probably go outside to fill that thing with cement or something, cement bags, you know, start thinking outside the box. Uh, I saw a guy post the other day and he uh, filled three different types of, uh, it was a box or something. It was like some rigid box, but with cement. And this was a dude in London who was stuck. And he's like, this is what I'm doing. And, but I look at it, I'm just like, you see those videos of the, the people in Nigeria uh, in those African tribes and they're training and it's like dude They don't have very much and they look incredible So I look at that as like hey, man I get to focus on bodybuilding for the next three or four months and focus on my health and, and really get into bodybuilding This is a this is a time to, to take it to the next level and learn about bodybuilding. It's easier than you think and this was answered in the very, very beginning, but if you just want to touch on it real quick, mm -hmm. uh, do you still recommend one to two muscle groups per day or should you do a circuit style full body? I would do one to two. I would get back to that. Uh, I think it's nice to throw in the full body. Uh, what we were talking about earlier is once we are all starting to realize that maybe we're not going to be out of the gym for a week and it's going to turn into three, four, let's just pretend six months. Let's just, let's just take worst case scenario or longer than that. We're not just going to do full body stuff every day or every other day. When you start thinking of the timeline of, hey, we might not have a gym for this long, it's probably gonna change you know, what you're doing. You're not just gonna do full body and push-ups every day. Once you can do that every day for six weeks or six months. So I would recommend, if you can, start thinking outside the box. This, we're gonna save this live. I'm gonna throw it up on, uh, it's gonna be up on GNC's. I don't know if we'll be able to put it anywhere else. But people should start doing stuff like this. It sounds dumb to make a home gym, but the diehards are doing it already. They're doing it. They're, they're making their own cement weights. They're making their own stuff. It doesn't have to look pretty. There's nothing pretty and cool about this. There's no max out involved. There's no one cheering behind you, but you're doing bodybuilding. And that's what bodybuilding was. So I think doing little things like this is all you need, but I would definitely get back to more of like a, a push-pull legs uh, or an upper body, lower body, but to do a uh, full body every single day as a, as a bodybuilder, someone who's, who's shooting towards a bodybuilding lifestyle, I wouldn't do just full body stuff. Calisthenics guys wanting to try some bodybuilding stuff, do it bro, absolutely. But a calisthenics guy, a CrossFit person, a, a power lifter, an Olympic lifter, know that if you stop doing your craft, you're gonna get worse at your craft. So that's what I'm trying to do is get people back to doing what they do. But think of it simply. There's so many things that we just did with everyday items and it's very close to the stuff that we would be doing in the gym. It's just a weird ass, lo weird location. <laughs> All right, let's do right. some biceps and triceps. Cool. And then they were asking for calves, too. We can throw those in. At the calves? Cap you got calves. it. You got it. How many calves? Three? All right. Calves, two. All right, so biceps and triceps. We're going to go. Oh, we did triceps. We got biceps. Well, we're done. Did you do biceps, too? Well, I did a little bit. We'll do more. Okay. All right. Biceps, again, with this guy. We were doing them with this just because I said you can load so much up and you can get the grip together, and it's just really easy that way. Uh, on the side like this. Again, I don't know how well a lot of these things work, but like if you go all the way up on like a hammer, I don't know how well this is gonna feel on the wrist or whatever, but, or snap, but little hammer curls. We were doing these on the pump the other day, kind of grabbing in like a, a wide grip like this, kind of a shoulder width uh, hammer grip. What's really fun about stuff like this is when you, when you don't have something to hold onto, it makes the exercise actually better because Try doing a bicep curl with nothing to freaking hold on to. Squeezing your chest together, squeezing your delts. I mean, it's hard to not get a full body workout 
when you're supporting something like that. But biceps with that, overhead with uh, this behind for people who missed it. Honestly, just like a great way to do it. A lot of these luggage uh, pieces can carry a shitload of weight, more than I can freaking overhead with my triceps. So you're kind of back to the normal. Sorry, they noticed Layla real quick. Oh, give Layla her some literally got a haircut, and you know what it showed us? <laughs> this is a little chubby. She's a little chubby. <laughs> I thought she was just all hair. No, I don't smile. care what anyone says. She's just beautiful. What she lacks in physical fitness, she makes up for in sweetness. She's right? got a banging personality. <laughs> all right. So, uh, calves, calves, abs. Calves. So abs. One thing that I really wanted to show people, I was doing this the other day. Find a wall that you can just kind of pinch off, or put your feet up against. But doing a full sit up, I was messing around with the different ways to get the best activation. So I was tucking my hips as close as possible and getting my spine down the ground. And we're just trying to remember. I remember it was. Uh, we were talking about this the other day, Alberto Nunez. He did a really, little, he'll appreciate this. But I remember him saying this. He goes, you could do a bunch of, how do you say it? He was like, you could do a hundred pull-ups, but you can only do a couple if you do them like me. It was something like that. So working as hard as possible on really basic movements. Yeah, you could probably do a hundred, but if you did time under tension, five second squeezes, like, like your life depended on it, probably not gonna be repping out hundred, you know, a crap load of pull-ups. So same concept with this. Could I sit here and just bang out as many sit-ups as possible? and tell the internet I did 100? Or could you slow down 20 of them, get a pause, and completely squeeze your ab like you're flexing your bicep the entire time? This is bodybuilding. It's not a high five to not get a sweat when you're done. All right, so get here. A little pinch here, a little support, tucked. Full squeeze at the top. A little contraction. You just want to squeeze as hard as possible. And this little part where I come down here gives me a little break. Kind of think of it as like a, a box squat. Disengage, and then you're going to contract your abs. Because a lot of people, when they do their, uh, their ab movements, they keep their spine straight. And just because you're going up like this, man, that's all freaking back. You want to crunch yourself forward a little bit, make sure those abs are engaged. You don't want to do a 100 sit-ups of back work. A little crunch. Done. Uh, a couple, couple calves? No, I'm going to do a couple more abs. Oh, more abs, okay. Uh, you can do some twists as well. The thing is with abs, so much stuff that I do involves like sit-ups and stuff or, or bench work. Anything where I could do a sit-up position, one to the side. Let me do that the other day. I'll go over here. Something to hook in. There we are. <laughs> All right. Obliques. Too easy for you? Ten second pause at the bottom. Make everything harder. Tension. I don't need to tell you what to do. Make everything harder. Back to a ten second pause. I'm not gonna do it, but you know. Stuff like that. Same thing with the pause if you wanna hook your feet under it. Everything plays a, a certain role. Not hooking your feet in over there makes you focus more on the rep and can give me a better mind muscle connection. Hooking my feet over here allows me to actually stay stationary the entire time and focus on repping it out. So there's a benefit to everything that we're doing here. All right, next one, calves. Calves are gonna be a biatch, just because it's gonna be the most important thing. So we're gonna go with weighted backpack. We'll go standing and it's just gonna go, well, let's do singles. All right, slip knots on. Is this a slip knot? <laughs> Jesus, I don't know. put a couple weights in. A couple weight skis. Someone asked if you're in a deficit, are you trying to cut right now? I am trying to cut right now. Mm -hmm. I am. So right now, uh, my, my off season started at uh, about 2.15. I'm currently 209 point, I think it was six. It was kind of early when I woke up, I was kind of spacing. Uh, 209.6, I think it's probably closer to like 210 something, but it's just uh, kind of fluctuations with water. I was kind of thinking twice about if I should even do it regarding what's going on, but dude, we're just, Stuck in our houses. It's not the end of the world. 
Stay here. Focus on bodybuilding. Let everyone be safe. Stay away from them. I'm gonna clear that stuff out. I wanna come back in six months and have everyone be like, what'd you do? <laughs> Got freaking yoked. All right. So uh, actually, will you stand up here? Just because I want people to see what I'm supporting with. Mm -hmm. Thank you, baby. Try not to make them car sick. I'm well, sorry. Well, you know, I just <laughs> went outside and left. <laughs> All right, see ya. So something that you can support, wall, this. You can get uh, anything that's like a ledge and put it up where you can just hold on to something and press. You don't even really need a ledge. But any type of a stair, holding on. And what I like to do on these is outside, straight, and inside. Different heads, different reps. Focus on those toes, point it out. Good contraction. When you're done with that, toes pointed in. Toes pointed in. So one thing, on top of like all the stuff that we're doing, this is literally. Uh, these things are boring at the end of the day, right? All these workouts are not what you want to do. They're not as fun, but I guarantee that if I could promise every one of you that the hard work that you're doing in these like little gym workouts, the more work you put into them, the more thought process that goes into them, the harder you make them, the more you stay involved with them over the course of time, you could come out of this bigger. So. A lot of people are saying this is just a band-aid. This is going to sit on here. I would start thinking about how you're going to be putting on size with these workouts. Start thinking like that. This is not to get you through to next week. This is what you're doing from now on. So if you start thinking like that, I think these workouts are going to get a lot better for you as well. Two really good questions. The first one is uh, what's your take on the resistance bands, using resistance bands instead of like weight and stuff? You can do it. But again, bodybuilding is not a bunch of resistance bands. It's weight, it's structure. You want to know what you're lifting and you want to try to do more next time. And if you can't do more next time with the weight, you want to do more with volume. And if you can't do more with volume, you're drop setting. And if you can't do drop sets, you're super setting it. And you just want to make it harder and harder and harder. And that involves bands. That involves putting bands into that as well. But remember, if we're, if we're coming back to basic bodybuilding, just think Arnold Schwarzenegger. Just, you, don't even have to, you don't have to think Arnold, you don't got to get on a steroid rant. This is bodybuilding from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. It's free weight and dumbbells. A couple cables here and there, but it started with dumbbells and you're gonna be fine without them bodybuilding wise. If you started your entire lifting off of bands and that's all you do and you have an incredible physique, band work it is. But you just gotta, like what I've always done is certain things like this and a lot of people, first exercise I ever did, a squat. I gotta incorporate squats into my, in, into my home routine or it's not even worth doing. Cool. But you're, but you're right. The, the bands are, are necessary. They play, a, they play a good role. Um, Brendan just asked a couple more ideas for quad focus exercises besides a squat. Okay, you got it. You saw the sissy squat, right? Okay, check it. Uh, you can do, let's do the back back again. Let's go knee to toe. Knee to toe split squat suck. 10 out of 10. <laughs> 10 out of 10. So we'll go wall supported. Just so, that's what I hate about split, uh, split squats and lunges in general. Walking, it's like, and you start to fail and you're in a stride, that's like a great way to pop a knee. So get in a position like this. This back knee is gonna come down to that back heel. Nice good form, upright. See the, the knee is traveling so far over this, basically a single leg squat. Support. One. Easy. Wanna drop set, throw the backpack off. Cool. Done. What else you got? We had another question about how do you stay motivated when you're home and you're by yourself and not in a gym setting? It's hard. This has been a, a testing time. Uh, it's weird because now the people that do go to my gym, like our friends, we don't see them either. Like I haven't seen Slade. It's Case, Cam and I, everyone's off doing their own thing. It's, it's kind of like it was years ago when it was just Case and I. So it's, it's not, it's hard because a lot of people find motivation from the others at the gym that are killing it and the other, and the other Instagram feeds of people at the gym that are killing it. Everyone's home. Everyone's going through the same stuff. So I would, you know, keep looking out there, keep searching for motivation that you can, but just know that this whole thing is temporary. That's what we all need to remember. It's serious. 
freaking serious, but it's temporary. And everybody who's doing what they're told and, and making the best of it and, and helping out with this workout, you know, just make it easier for everybody. Get the workouts going the best that you can. This won't be an issue down the line. You'll think back, we were talking, Casey and I were just talking about this, how we're gonna look back at this and be like, man, that was a crazy time. Crazy time to be alive. And we'll all be able to talk about it, but I think we're all gonna get through it. So this is a weird thing. Gotta make these workouts fucking freaking hard. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> and also I was going to add to that to just carve out time. Like we have, most of us have a lot more time now. So yeah. just yeah, make, it, actually, make it a schedule. And that's the thing. That's what, that just irks me about like the fitness world. It's like, you have so many people that are starting to dog other people for doing it. It's like the gym's gone. Think about anything that somebody loves, uh, building cars, riding motorcycles, shooting guns, uh, anything. If that was taken away from you, you'd think differently. That's all I'm saying. So gyms and everything, a lot of people's hobbies are taken away. Yoga, I see a lot of people doing stuff at home. You just gotta make, do, make your passion happen at home. You'll feel so much better when you start killing these workouts and it doesn't feel all halved. Get done with those things. Put your heart and soul into each one of these workouts, even if, even if it's at home. Put a poster up of Arnold. Put a poster up of Arnold or Bane. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Andrew Hollinsworth just asked, how much do you think I can bench? 225. <laughs> 225 all day, Andrew. 315. 315. I dream big, Andrew. I know we can do it. <laughs> kid's, a, kid's a jokester. Uh, a lot of people are jumping in asking about, you know, different muscle groups. Yeah. We are going to save this. Yeah. Workout, if you just so mind real quick, see. I know a lot of people are getting to this late. We're saving it. We went through all the different types of uh, training that we could do. We filled up the different uh, jugs of protein and the creatine and the little bottles that we might have around our house with river rocks to create our own weight sets. Uh, what we were trying to do at the beginning of this whole thing was show people how to get a hard, like a pretty fun at home gym going with the mandatories checked off. And that's what we did at the beginning of the video. So it'll be saved for everyone to go see. Perfect. And then uh, oh, ad hey. advice for cardio during this time. Uh, cardio, I mean, I don't wanna, cardio's easy. So cardio could be a number of things. Jump ropes are cheap as hell, heck. I can say hell. All right, so jump ropes, uh, I would recommend. I wouldn't go out there and buy like a tire or something to flip. I mean, I'm trying to think of cheapest things possible to get the most effective thing done. That's why I was saying earlier, you might not really like only doing standing calf raises on a stair, but if I promise you after three months, your calves will be bigger, is it really that big of a deal if it's boring? Get the work done. So, uh, what was it again, sorry? <laughs> I want to come back to that. Um, I totally forgot. Did you? Spaced it. Oh my God. <laughs> Hold on, I want to answer that question if someone says it again. Okay, yeah, say it again. Uh, have you experienced any increase in eating out of boredom? Uh, yeah. I think the hard part is, is I, I eat out of boredom. So I'll just be sitting around and being like, man, I got nothing to do, I better snack. And uh, now that the, we had nice weather for about a week and then the rain started coming in, so now we're not even sitting outside or, not that we were going and trying to like get out and do stuff, but it was just nice to be able to walk outside if we had the option. So. Yeah, it's been uh, pretty brutal and the food's been going up, especially with my diet. So now I've been having to really uh, reel it in. Yeah. Oh, we were talking about cardio. <laughs> they cardio. reminded us. Okay, so back to the cardio. So I would do, uh, again, if, you want, if, if you're talking to me, I'm not going to go out there and just go for a jog. I want something a little bit more structured. So one of my favorite ways to do cardio and one of the most intense cardio sessions that I ever do, which is just going to be one-on-one -on, -one on your own, is jump rope. Jump rope's pretty cheap. You can go get one of those little beaded ones that you get from fourth grade so you don't hurt yourself. It's all good and just jump rope. I would do high intensity. I would probably do something where it's like three minutes on, one minute off, three minutes on, one minute off, three minutes on, one minute off, listen to your music and, and just rock through it. I think uh, when I used to do jump rope back when I was doing uh, my boxing cardio last cut with Dan Peel, I actually thought that my calves got bigger over the course of all the jump rope stuff. So this is a good opportunity to you know take advantage of that as well. But jump rope's no joke if you do it right. I mean, it's constant movement over the course of the time period that you're doing. Uh, you have to stay moving. And I, I think it's one of the best ones you can do. High intensity, I just don't want people to sit over there and walk on a treadmill. Go get a treadmill, go for a walk in the neighborhood. If you're gonna work out, get some work done. Don't just sit there and say, I did it, I did 10 push-ups. Post a picture of you sweating saying, I found a way to squat. I found a way to do some high intensity, you know, interval training and I got my work done. So I'd say jump rope, cheap. Uh, what is a better snack, a banana or a satsuma orange? I recommend both, and then I recommend an, uh, an apple eating the whole thing. <laughs> uh, no, bananas are my thing. What was the last thing that we were gonna do? Um, 
But anybody have any other questions for workouts? I'll start firing them off. Um, Whatever you guys need. Well, a lot of them were just questions about people jumping in late, so. Yeah. Um, we could probably just take one or two more questions. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of people are asking about what your what your typical daily diet looks like, or if you've made changes based on you know being home. Yeah. So the biggest change, and I don't know if people are feeling this all over the place, but I never thought I would get to a point where meat is gone, and it's and it's really strange because it's frozen chicken, it's fresh chicken, it's it's limited items. So we'll go to like Costco and you get a thing and then you're done. And you're like, well, that's going to be gone soon. So, and again, like I'm a bodybuilder that has zero to do with like people that need this food more than me. It's just, I'm sure it's more, it's definitely more important elsewhere, but it's, it, it hurts people's diet who are trying to be healthy. So, uh, my protein intake has taken quite a hit. I have, uh, been getting 230 grams of protein in and, uh, I'd say over half of that has been through protein shakes. You don't have food, you don't have food. You're not going to sit there and say, oh, sit here and just, oh, I didn't eat today. You got to do what you got to do, and it's unfortunate, and it sucks, but there has been some major eating habits that have changed. We, uh, we're trying to eat healthier. Like, I want to start doing more potatoes and stuff like that. It's just really easy to be like, man, I'm depressed. Let's eat something crappy to be happy. Or watch a movie, and you're sitting there. Nobody wants to eat something, a salad or something healthy and all that, but this is a weird time where people could – kind of, you know, get a hold of their health and, and make something happen with it. If you're sitting there stuck at home, you can start taking your hobbies a little bit more serious that you could, that you're in control of. So, a uh, quick food related thing go. since we're talking about food. Uh, yeah. do you add any spices to your ground turkey or just eat it plain? Uh, Lowry's. <laughs> that was a workaholics uh, reference. Uh, I do Lowry's or, uh, not old Bay. What's the other one? Johnny's. Johnny's. Lowry's and Johnny's. Uh, those are my homies and, and Jack. This is a good one. I think this will be the last one. Uh, any idea for the adductor, abductor uh, workouts? Because those are tough. Those are tough to do if you don't have the machines. Yeah. I have one. <laughs> I have one. It's going to look weird. I'll do it. I don't care. It's like, I, it's, I've seen girls do it. I used to do it. Uh, oh, we don't have it here. True. I'm doing my own way. Uh, you can get on a, in a position where you have your legs like this with something uh, like a... Do you have a... There it is. Hold the phone. <laughs> Literally, hold that phone. We'll leave little guys. I'll show you puppies in the meantime. And a lot of people are asking how Aldo's doing. He's... Well, I'm waiting for you. I'll show him. He's on mega bed. Whenever we stack the beds up together, we call yeah. it mega bed. There's the dude sleeping. He's like, don't bug me. Hey! <laughs> hey! <laughs> he will not wake up. Hey, right <laughs> Sorry. No, I'm just kidding. I just did this. It's actually pretty hard. All right. Okay, cool. Nobody judge me on this. I'm trying to help the adult <laughs> do it out. So, don't tear anything, but So you just let yourself stretch, and then you bring your legs to yourself. So it's the body weight portion. Your range of motion. Get yourself in that position if you want. It feels actually pretty good here. But it's just your own weight stretching apart. Hold yourself over there. Uh, best thing would probably be bands, but if you don't have it, these little sliders... They sell this, don't they? I think so, yeah. Like little tiny pad versions. The hard part about this is we have this friggin' tile. Yeah. And it just hit but my kneecap. You... <laughs> it makes you wanna scream. I just cutting you off. They're cutting me off? <laughs> you can't cut me off. Well, I guess we're getting dropped, guys. Uh, if anybody needs us to do more of this stuff, come over and ask my page. Uh, if you guys want more of this, tell GNC to uh, throw us back up. And this and was fun. Any other questions you guys have, uh, just ask and stay healthy. Uh, hope you guys are good.